Stay tuned for the video. What's going on, YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at with a brand new video for you guys today. So I was requested to check out this video. It's called Where Mortal Kombat Characters Come From. So this should be an interesting video um, to see where some of your favorite and my favorite uh, Mortal Kombat characters like originate from or where the ideas came all about. So without any further ado, let's check this video out in about three, two, one. Welcome to Mojo Plays. Today we're looking at the inspirations or stories behind certain Mortal Kombat characters. Let's do this. Finish him. Win. Flawless we victory. Begin, we publish new content Fatality. week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our Pizza. latest Mortal videos. Kombat. Hey, I got on. Cetrion. Surrender oh, Mother Earth. Crown and the Elder Jackson Briggs. No harm will come to you. Along with popular culture, Mortal Kombat is known for referencing religion of historical cultures while crafting its roster of deadly warriors. Correct. As the fourth Elder God to join Netherrealm's universe, Cetrion rules over the four elements of life in general. Although the franchise typically refrains from creating direct parallels with any ancient deities, some connections can nevertheless be deduced. Stand down, please. Resistance only ensures your suffering. In the case of Cetrion, the most likely influencers are Ceres and Demeter, the Roman and Greek goddesses of agriculture I was just and fertility, gonna say that. respectively. Through their governance of nature and reproduction, Ceres and Demeter were responsible for creating life, a duty handled by Cetrion among the elder gods. Woo. Damn. Goro. <laughs> Out of all this the characters included in 1992's Mortal Kombat, one monster stood out from the otherwise human cast. For the most part, Midway adopted digitized sprites based on actors to actualize oh, the early Don't rosters. But Goro Don't and subsequent is. monsters like Shiva and Kintaro were stop motion. In an interview with ARG Cast, Mortal Kombat co-creator John Tobias named old monsters from films like Clash of the Titans as a launching pad for the legendary gaming villain. Well, the the idea for Goro, for Goro came about. Um, Damn, you know this is an old ass movie. Look how old that shit looks. Um, Visuals, everything look old. Back child. To old like, Ray Harryhausen movies. That's, that's what you call Harry old Hans, editing. Um, and Clash films. of the Titans, all those things. So, what about Goro's four arms? The monster's defining characteristics harbors back to the Golden Voyage of Sinbad, a British mm. fantasy film featuring a six-armed stop-motion monster based on the Hindu deity Kali. Ooh. Ermac <laughs> wins. Prior to the rise of the internet and social media led to the widespread distribution of readily accessible information, players were dependent on gaming magazines and their own imaginations. Unfortunately, both are known to be occasionally wrong. Mortal Kombat's diagnostics menu featured a listing entitled Ermax, which fans assumed Ooh, referred to a secret character. Alas, it turned out that Ermax actually stood for Error Macros, not a hidden character. Still, after years of oh, speculation, really? Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 decided it would be easier to create Ermac than to dispel any such rumors. Damn! Shao Kahn! My boy! Similarly, Scarlet started Shao out as a Kahn. rumored glitched katana in Mortal Kombat 2. Ooh. Unlike Ermac, Scarlet had to wait until Mortal Kombat 2011's DLC to become a real fighter. <laughs> This is correct. How are you gonna do Melina like that? Bring her the fuck back. Sub Zero and Scorpion. Oh, I want to hear this one. You cannot have Mortal Kombat without arguably the franchise's most iconic characters. Of Debuting course. in the original game and returning for almost every Get over sequel, here. Scorpion and Sub Zero are fierce rivals with eerily similar costumes and opposing elements at their disposal, creating an almost yin yang dynamic between the two. Yin yang, yo! Remember that cartoon? The narrative, Scorpion and Sub Zero are a byproduct of the technological limitations faced by Midway. But the limitations of the of the of the technology at the time also helped drive sort of the, the character designs, and so. Um, and so the simplicity of the costumes you you know you see in those early games is is because mm -hmm. too much detail and everything becomes just kind of a jumbled mess. Since the same foundation serves as the base for both fighters, the developer could save memory as only one character needed to be. It's the rock in here. Palette swapping proved so effective. Midway even threw in a third ninja, Reptile, as a bonus character. I love Reptile. Bring him back. Rain. <laughs> 
Damn. Seeking to exhaust all the colors of the rainbow, Mortal Kombat has a yellow, blue, green, gray, and now a red ninja as mentioned earlier with Ermac. Considering the Attract Mode's intro shows a purple ninja named Rain, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 seemed to have more in store. However, yes. try as people might, the character could not be found in the actual game. No. He could. I like Rain. Rain eventually became playable in the home console releases, the ninja started out as a joke character inspired by Prince's Purple Rain. As a I fan of Prince. the legendary musician, Ed Boon, Mortal Kombat's co-creator, added Rain to mess a bit with players. Liu Kang. Hence my name. Damn. Bruce Lee's presence can be felt across various mediums, and of gaming course. is no exception. Soul Calibur, Tekken, Fatal Fury, and even Pokemon all boast characters reminiscent of the exceptional martial artist. In the case of Mortal Kombat, this honor falls to the franchise's prominent hero Liu Kang, who resembles a digitized Bruce Lee in the first game. Damn. Along with the Shaolin monk's physical design, Kang can also transform into a dragon, a mythological creature synonymous with Bruce That's Lee. Some shit there. Originally, Kang was intended to be closer to a traditional bald monk, but actor Ho Sung Pak preferred to keep his hair, so the dragon entered the scene. Yeah! Liu Kang wins fatality. Raiden and Shang Tsung. Uh oh. I can't help but think of that shit with that. Many B-movies directly or indirectly assisted in defining Mortal Kombat's identity. That being said, the one source of inspiration most frequently cited has to be John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China. Big Trouble in Little China was just kind of a, oh, yeah. an, a, a take on That's all the, right, all the other right. Hong Kong movies that I, I had also been exposed to, but it was like an Americanized version of it. Mortal Kombat's main villain, Shang Tsung, is heavily inspired by the film's own antagonist, David Lopin, who are both decrepit old men seeking to obtain souls to extend their lives. You look like them too! The comparisons do not end there, as the iconic Raiden is the spitting image of Big Trouble in Little China's lightning character. While Mortal Kombat's Elder God is primarily based on Japan's deity of lightning and thunder, Raiden's hat is a deliberate nod to Big Trouble in Little China. Yep. Damn! Johnny Cage. This mother. I make this look easy. Armed with sunglasses and a cheeky grin, Johnny Damn. Cage's not so subtle allusions to budget actor Jean Claude Van Damme. In fact, Cage's design in the original Mortal Kombat is basically identical to Van Damme's look in the 1988 martial arts classic Bloodsport. Wow, wouldn't it be cool if Jean Claude Van Damme could be sort of a star in our game? A scene from the same movie also inspired Cage's split punch attack, a move later renamed as the Nutcracker. Oh, I can see why. Yikes. Mortal Kombat's history with Van Damme Damn. goes back further than just Cage. We went back to our licensing guy and said, um, you know, asked him if, um, if he could um, uh, approach, um, you know, Van Damme and his people and see if there was any interest in, in being involved in, in um, an arcade game. Originally, Midway wanted to create a fighting game starring the actor, although Van Damme rejected the idea. For, oh. for whatever oh. reason, it, it, it didn't work. Oh, okay. And, um, but, um, but upper management um, liked the idea of a fighting game and had faith in Ed and I enough that um, they allowed us to kind of push forward um, you know, without Van Damme being involved. See what I told y'all. This is a this is an interesting video. Admit it or not, it's fine. But um, this is very interesting <clears throat> to hear about uh, Scorpion, uh, Sub Zero, Reptile. Listen, if they don't do nothing else, like after they give us the trailers and stuff for the Joker and then Spawn for the combat pack, all right, that's cool and all. But I'm gonna need them to bring Rain and Melina back and Reptile. Like that's the all only three I could ask for. Like that is it. That's all. That is all I'm saying. Because but I knew about the um uh, where Rain's character originated from. You know, in like tribute to Prince. So shout out to Prince. R.I.P. You know, love Prince. And uh, but yeah, this was a pretty good inter. Uh, this was an interesting video to say the least. Um, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, comment below. 
some of your favorite uh, Mortal Kombat characters in general. Just let me know in the comment section below. As well as anything I can rescue for you guys next. Okay? Hit that subscribe button. Follow me on my Instagram and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in a minute. It's Taylor Rain. I'm out.